Hi, it's Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Armorama.com, and welcome to another Turning the Page. Today we've got kind of a special one for you. This is the premiere edition of Damaged, or Damaged, as some people like to say in the fancy way. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the subtext on this is Weathered and Worn Models Magazine. Now, this is a product of AK uh, Interactive or AK Publishing. Um, it is... Uh, as I quoted, uh, or as I said in my um, mail call video, this is kind of, um, in one way, a replacement for uh, the Weathering Magazine, which used to be kind of under their house, but then uh, left their house uh, <laughs> um, and went off to to, to Mig's house. Um, but this is uh, this is going to be a new foray for them, and obviously they put a lot of books and have a lot of contacts with modelers and so forth, so this was pretty much a no-brainer, I think. Um, this first issue obviously features on the cover some very interesting subject matters. We've got the Mad Max Hit the Road, the Snow Speeder, Fire and Hoth, uh, the Used and Damaged Forklift, and Two Weathered Barrels, and much more, as it says. Um, again, issue number one, uh, 495 euros, 4.95, or 4,95, not sure when, when you know, in, in, in Europe they use a comma, but obviously they won't maybe want to have it make sense for for us Americans too, I don't know. Or maybe in Spain they don't use the comma. I know in Germany and, and uh, in England they seem to use the comma. Uh, or maybe it's mostly just Germany. Anyways, I'm, I'm rambling as I, as I often do. All right, so uh, initial uh, introduction here written by um, Jave Diesel. At least I assume that's a Spanish name, so um, that's why I did the H sound. Um, this, of course, magazine, um, AK is located in Spain, so we're gonna get a lot of uh, uh, some Spanish influence, but probably a lot of European influence as well. And I need to get my glasses. I had them all the way back at my uh, my computer for some reason. Um, well, there you go. There's the first time ever I, in a in a turning the page I've done a an edit. So, but I couldn't have you guys just hang in there for a while. Oh my goodness, this these glasses are a bit messed up. All right, now I can see. I'm having the hardest time reading small print, or in this case, small bold print. Um, when Fernando and Ruben surprised me by asking me to write this editorial, my first reply was to ask them why a military modeler were writing an editorial introduction to a general modeling magazine. The response not only answered my question, but, but also perfectly illustrated the logic behind asking me in the first place. As modeling veterans, we can sometimes have a bit of a narrow viewpoint when it comes to our hobby, which explains why newcomers to the hobby, as I realize I'm reading very fast, you can always slow it down. You know there actually is a feature in YouTube where you can say, um, run this video at like 1.25 of speed. Uh, it basically like slows it down just a bit. So anyways, helpful hint, there you go. You get, you get uh, you know, reviews of, of, of hobby products as well as uh, reviews of, of, of YouTube stuff. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but I just wanted to give you kind of a little bit of a, a glimpse there into the content. All right, so uh, this first article obviously is on the forklift what you can expect in these magazines which is typical of a lot of these uh, publications especially the ones out of Spain which I think are probably some of the best um, is very high quality pictures very um, attention to detail oriented design work and layout I mean this layout is as good as you know many uh, mainstream magazines like I'm talking about like GQ or you know uh, uh, Playboy uh, you know whatever you know mainstream stuff that they, a lot of a lot of people obviously uh, buy off the newsstands so which I think is a which is a definite plus because it gives it uh, a very professional look and feel and uh, professionalism abounds you know you've got lots of uh, very high-end modelers who do these articles this particular one by the way was by um, I gotta figure out how they do their their peoples. Um, all right, well, they could be better about that. The article clearly should say, ah, here we go, modeler, Ruben Gonzalez. Um, so, but yeah, I personally prefer it down like here, you know, uh, by, I think it should just, I think this is fine that it's in this, but it should also say somewhere right here by the title by Ruben Gonzalez. Because uh, obviously he hopefully wrote a lot of this, or at least it was transcribed from his uh, native tongue. Um, so yeah, I just think that's kind of layout wise. So here I am praising them for the layout and then criticizing at the same time. If that isn't a Jim Starkweather typical kind of, uh, of, of review. Um, so yeah, you know, you, again, you, the expectations here are, are going to be, I think uh, if you're familiar with these types of magazines, like the weathering magazine, you're going to be familiar with the way these are 
kind of laid out and the way the kind of content you're gonna expect to find in them. Uh, a, a subject matter near and dear to my heart. This one's by Juan Manuel um, Villegas. And uh, nice job there with the uh, the green seating. Is that the actual color? I, I'm assuming it is, but uh, you probably don't see those other than maybe the headdress behind them. So uh, and I, don't, I have to admit, I never caught that, that they were green before, but maybe not. Maybe he's just making a, a creative uh, addition there. Um, this is the, which kit is this? Is this the, this is the Bandai kit in 148 scale. So it uh, looks pretty nice. All right, well, anyway, so you can expect obviously lots of steps, finished photos, although they don't seem to, I mean, that's actually, it's to me a decent amount of finished photos because they also included some at the beginning and there's lots of good shots of various parts of it. So don't overdo it on the, the finished photos, which is what they did, did not do. Um, and uh, then they have this one, which wasn't featured on the homepage, this seaplane Northway Aviation. Um, again, some great detail here. I like all this uh, internal stowage and, and cargo. Uh, so, you know, you can expect a lot of different kinds of things in this. I mean, they said it was a general modeling magazine, but I don't really think that's fair. It's probably more a all genre magazine. In other, in other words, I don't think you're going to find, even though that maybe that there aren't any tanks in this issue, maybe, I mean, there's a military vehicle, um, although it's kind of more configured as a civilian Jeep, but um, Chernobyl. So that's pretty nice for people who've uh, wondered what Chernobyl is like. And then the Mad Max car, obviously, this one's by um, Andre um, Montiel. Um, and, or Andre. Is it Andreas with the, with the S? Andreas? Andreas model. Anyways, uh, this is the Aoshima kit. Again, some amazing final uh, outcome here. Uh, he's even got like some some gas kind of uh, drift from, you know, probably gas coming out of the cap there. And this final one is uh, Sputnik or something? It looks like, oh, so there's some kind of alien probe thing. Alien probe thing. Which kit is this? Uh, this is Scratch Belt. Very cool looking. Anyways, so yeah, you know, this is just an expectations kind of, you know, turning the page just to show you. In the next issue, they're going to have uh, this Hitachi uh, loader, which we actually got that uh, kit when it came out from, um, I want to say Hasegawa. Um, so other than that, they don't really say specifically what's going to be in the article. But uh, and then we've got some e-models advertisement on the back. Boy, e-models, they, they are popping up in all my videos lately, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, e-models. Yes, yes. Um, so uh, I think they, at one point they were going to advertise with us, but I'm not sure they, I think they might have briefly, but I don't, I don't know if they still are or not. I don't think they are actually. So I shouldn't plug them. Darn it. They should advertise on one of the largest hobby sites on the, on the internet. It's, I, I, you know, people always said that. One, one time I was at a show, sorry to, to, to borrow the, 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 the mic here for a little bit, uh, AK. But um, one time I was at a show and a vendor, um, I went up to a vendor and was, you know, this was back in the early days of the sites, uh, maybe like five years in or something. And I went up to a vendor and he said, um, oh, I said to him, you know, here, I'm Jim Starkweather. I'm with Armorama, da, 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 and one of the largest, you know, uh, AFE sites. And he says, yeah, they all say that. <laughs> Which I had to chuckle at the time because it was like, you know, if any, anybody who kind of knows armor and AFE stuff, I mean, we are the largest armor AFE site on the net. I mean, at one point, maybe Missing Links was, you know, in the first few years of Armorama starting, Missing Links was also a very popular site at the time. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, you might be, be able to make the argument that now Fine Scale, Fine Scale site is larger or whatever. But, you know, uh, it's, we're still like the biggest and the oldest um if you pulled all the aircraft models on a fine scale, I don't think you'd actually have as big an armor community as, as us. So, yeah, I, I still think we're the biggest. Uh, and how do I know these things? Well, we have statistics, and they, sh they show me how many people come to the website. And right now, that's like well over 100,000 to 150,000, somewhere between 100 to 150,000 people a month. Just go to Armorama, never mind all our other sites. So, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of a big deal. Even people on YouTube, sometimes, you know, they, they approach me and they, or they contact me in the comments section, and it's like, you know, like, all I do is YouTube. <laughs> no, that's not all I do. Um, in fact, obviously, that's one of the reasons why I kind of sometimes treat these videos or this, this content a little cavalierly, because let's be fair. There's a very, 
I, um, there's a very large YouTube community out there. When I say large, though, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's a bunch of people, but it's not as large as the overall internet community on, say, you know, forums and, and websites and so forth. So, or even on Facebook to that, to that degree. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I wish that 10,000 people were watching this uh, video, every, every video I put up, or, or even 100,000 people or something, but that's, that's not the case. Obviously, it's a very small, uh, we're talking about thousands of people. Um, and that's because a lot of modelers are obviously older and they don't watch videos and, you know, they'll see this video on, uh, they'll click on the page on Armorama or whatever, whatever site we have this up on model, model geek and so forth. And, but then they won't click on the actual video. Oh, that's a video. I don't want to watch that. <laughs> uh, so, you know, not a criticism. It's just, it's more of a, you know, like an experience thing. Some people are, they don't, you know, they don't go for that technology or whatever. Uh, it's amazing. They're on the internet probably in, 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 in truth. Um, but anyways, so, sorry to hijack that portion of the training page, but I made the video longer. So, you know, uh, that's going to help. That, that's going to make YouTube happy. Um, again, let's talk about briefly, um, before I get off here, about availability. Now, I haven't checked, but the magazine probably isn't available. We've already had a comment on the mail call video that I did uh, yesterday, uh, or the day before, actually. Um, and uh, saying that they they could find it, but only in Germany, and it was going to cost $60 to ship, which I, I find that a little, little odd. I mean, they must have been...